Hi there, welcome to The Race Advisor. My name is Michael Wilding and in this video we are going to be looking at grades, groups and classes in UK horse racing. <music> If you're new to horse racing, it's very easy to get overwhelmed by the amount of terminology that's out there. So the classification system is designed to ensure that horse races are more evenly contested. But it is really confusing for a lot of people who follow horse racing. Now, according to the British Horse Racing Authority, there are roughly 14,000 horses currently in training in the United Kingdom. Now, as you can imagine, there is a substantial difference in ability between these 14,000 horses. So it was essential for the British Horse Racing Association, affectionately known the BHA, to develop a system to rate each of these horses. And the result of that system is the classification system that uses handicap ratings. Now, the BHA uses a team of handicappers who analyze a horse's performance to provide a fair assessment of the quality of that horse. So in the United Kingdom, horses are given an official rating, also known as the OR. And this is used to decide which events the horse can run in and how much weight that horse should carry in each of those events. So typically, a horse needs to have run at least three times before it can get an OR or an official rating. The BHA has created a standardized classification system that groups horses into appropriate races with the aim to make things easy. And it does this for national hunt, flat and all weather. So what I'm going to go through in this video is a detailed insight into those different horse racing grades, groups and classes used in this classification system. And I'm going to give you some of the statistics inside those classes as well, so it may help you get an edge over the bookmaker. So by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly what a class in horse racing in the United Kingdom actually means. So let's get started on how horse racing class actually works. So in UK horse racing handicap events, the official rating of each runner not only determines what class it can run in, but also how much weight that horse is going to carry relative to the other horses in the race. So the higher the horse's handicap rating, or the OR, the more weight it must carry. And each official rating point translates to a certain amount of weight. For instance, one OR point equals one pound of weight. So if a horse has an OR, or official rating, of eight points higher than another horse in the race, it must carry eight pounds more weight than that horse in this specific race. And this is very specific to every race. And this doesn't allow for any uh, delayed rating increases or rider claims or any of that kind of information. Now, in non-handicap races, each horse actually carries the same amount of weight. There are sometimes exceptions made here, um, but generally speaking, they carry the same amount of weight. The horse with the highest official rating has a distinct advantage in these races. And these horses are usually the heavy odds on favorites, depending on how big the gap between ratings actually is. Now, the purpose of a handicap rating is to theoretically eliminate the advantage of the best horses um, in the race. So that's why we do these races. If they got it perfect, every horse would cross the finish line at exactly the same time. Now, the official rating used in flat and all weather racing does differ from the national hunt ratings. So dividing them out is what we're going to do to explain the horse racing classes best. So what are horse racing national hunt classifications? Now, national hunt races are divided into these following classes. Class 1, this is the highest class of races, it's actually divided into grade 1, 2, three and listed races. Then we have class two, three, four, five, and finally class six being the lowest class. Flat and all weather classifications are slightly different. We still have class one, and again, this is the highest class, but this time it's divided into group one, two, three, and then listed races. Following that, we have class two, three, four, five, six, and finally class seven at the bottom. And we're gonna look into these in a bit more detail. So we're going to start with the National Hunt classifications. And we're going to start with Horse Racing National Hunt Class 1. And I'm going to look at Class 1 initially as an entire piece. And then we're going to break this down to Grade 1, Grade 2, Grade 3, 
and listed races. So Horse Racing National Hunt Class 1, these horses are at the pinnacle of the sport. And as we've already said, they're divided into Grade 1, Grade 2, Grade 3 and listed, and we're going to look at those in a moment. But before we do that, how do favourites perform in all the Class 1 National Hunt races? Well, going back to January the 1st, 2020, there have been 606 favourites, and 201 of them have won. That's a 33% strike rate, but to Betfair SP, they've made a minus 12.5% return on investment. Um, with an AE, or an average expected, of 0 0.85. What is the AE, or the average expected? The AE, or the average expected, tells us whether these horses have an advantage based on their odds, or if they don't have any advantage at all. An AE with a score of over 1 indicates that there is an advantage. An AE with a score under 1 indicates that we're likely to make a loss on these horses were we betting them to win. So blindly backing all favourites in National Hunt Class 1 races is going to result in heavy losses. But let's break this down into Grade 1, Grade 2, Grade 3 and listed. Now in Grade 1 races, Grade 1, Class 1, these races are the absolute cream of the crop. They attract the very best entrance uh, in racing in the United Kingdom. Now, usually these races only feature horses with official ratings of 150 or higher. Um, again, basing all of our statistics going back to January the 1st, 2020, there have been 119 favourites in these races. 52 of them have won for nearly a 44% winning rate. They've also made a 4% return on investment at Betfair SP. Um, however, the AE is sitting at 0.98. And this tells us that we've made a small profit from these horses um, and that looking at the top in this market is not a bad idea, but there is not really much advantage to be had without doing further investigation. Grade 2 Class 1 races, still pretty close to being the best of the best here. Usually these horses have official ratings of 140 or higher, but occasionally a trainer is going to try their luck by getting a run into the race that they feel may have a little bit of capacity to improve during the race. Um, so we've had 216 bets since 2020, 79 winners. That's just over a 36.5% winning rate. However, there's been a huge loss of nearly 17% return on investment um, if you followed all these winners. And the AE is 0 0.84, so that shows us there is really no advantage to be had in these winners. You would definitely not get rich by backing favourites in these races. And in Grade 2 Class 1 races on the National Hunt, maybe you want to be looking outside of the favourite. Grade 3, Class 1 National Hunt races. Again, we're moving slightly down the pipeline, but we're still within Class 1, so we're still at the top of the racing in the United Kingdom. Now, relatively low official ratings kind of may compete in, in these races. Um, and we've had 80 favourites in these races, and only 16 of those favourites have actually won for a 20% win rate. There's been a small positive return on investment, 2.72%, so there's a tiny profit, but the low win rate suggests that favourites um, are often available at quite high prices, um, and we may be able to find a good competition elsewhere in the field in these races. Listed races, Class 1 listed races, are the lowest grade of Class 1 races in National Hunt Racing. And once again, these horses come in with relatively low official ratings, um, and they, but they do have a fighting chance of winning. We've had 158 favourites since 2020, 51 of them have won for a 32% win rate. However, those winners haven't managed to make a profit and they still have produced a whopping minus, nearly minus 16% loss for the return on investment. The AE is just 0 0.78. So while the strike rate is okay, we have they have made a huge loss on these favourites and the AE figure suggests that the odds are just way too low to be considering favourites in listed races um, class one. However, if you are uh, a layer uh, on the exchanges, there may be an angle for you out there. Looking at now at National Hunt Class 2 races, we're starting to move down the ladder in terms of the quality of racing, and these events tend to feature kind of open handicap races um, with horses that have ratings up to kind of around 140. Now, in these events, horses with official ratings of 120 can still compete with their higher rated opponents on a pretty even keel. 
And these races are ideal for those horses that are capable of improving and competing in class one company. There's been 681 bets in our sample, so that's 681 favourites. 223 of those favourites have won for a nearly 33% win rate. They have, however, made a minus 4% loss. But with a, uh, in non-handicap races, these horses have won, these favourites have won 47% of the time, with just a small loss of 2.7%. And that strike rate for Class 2 favourites in non-handicap races are worth probably a second look. And if you use the FMFR method available for free in your account on the Race Advisor, those horses may be ones that you should be considering. National Hunt Class 3 races, we're slightly down that pecking order now. These races can produce some really high quality performers and such events tend to consist of handicap and novice handicap races and the horses have official ratings kind of up to about 135 in that sort of range. Generally these races are going to be divided between horses rated between 0 and 120 and 0 and 135 and those are kind of the two categories that you're most likely to see. There's 1,989 favourites in our sample in these races, and 770 of them have won. And that's nearly a 39% win rate, which is truly excellent, particularly when we consider that they've only lost minus 0.65%. However, if we again look at the non handicap races in these Class 3 events, this win rate exceeds 50%. Um, but there is a slightly higher loss at minus 2.85%. So again, using the FMFR method could pay dividends in these races, allowing you to filter them out well. Um, and there are plenty and plenty of these races to choose from. And so these are good races to be looking at if you're looking at national hunt racing. Moving down to Class 4 National Hunt Racing, these events are typically categorised between 0 to 100 and rated horses and 0 to 115 rated horses. Um, the races tend to include a combination of up-and-comers and older horses that have also lost a bit of form, kind of slowing down in their ratings, slowly moving down the groups. We've got 4,655 uh, favourites in our sample, of which 1,886 have won for just over a 40% win rate. Um, those horses have made a small loss of minus 2.86% um, and the AE is 0 0.94. But again that AE indicates while there is not much value and we see that from the ROI, there is a lot of potential in these horses and with the win rate so high, a little bit of focus, a little bit of analysis may be able to push that for you into a profit. The strike rate in non-handicapped Class 4 races on the favourites increases to over 48%, but blindly backing those horses is going to produce a loss of 3.42%, which indicates that the bookmakers are taking account of that information. Let's move into Class 5 National Hunt races, because these are generally the lowest level of handicap racing in National Hunt, and they're divided normally into 0 to 85 rated horses and 0 to 95 rated horses. And you sometimes see horses in here that once competed in much higher grades, but they're kind of coming to the tail end of their careers. We've got 2,864 favourites in this sample, of which 951 for a pretty impressive 33%. There's only a minus 1.7 percent loss on these horses and again the AE is not too bad at 0 0.94 indicating that there isn't an advantage straight out of the box but you may be able to find one with a little bit of analysis. In the non-handicap class 5 races the win rate on favourites goes up to 39% and you actually get a small profit of 0.1% from blindly backing them. I'm not suggesting that you go ahead and do that, but that's definitely horses you should be considering in a little bit more detail. Finally, Class 6 National Hunt Racing is the lowest level of National Hunt Racing. This usually consists of younger horses that haven't really achieved an official rating yet, like Hunter Steeplechases, National Hunt Flat Races, um, and Trainers tend to use these races to give the horses experience on a race course before they start their jumps career. Very, very few horses in here. We've only got 59 favourites in our sample, of which 28 had won. Now, that's over a 47% win rate, but the sample size is really too small to go into any detail with any clarity.
So that's the national hunt classes um, in UK horse racing. Now I'm going to move on to flat and all weather horse racing classifications. <music> Now these classifications are similar to the National Hunt Racing, but there are a couple of notable differences. First of all, Class 1 events are categorised as group events instead of grade events. And there are also Class 7 races. Now that being said, Class 7 races are extremely rare, and there actually hasn't been a Class 7 race since 2019. Um, however, it is also important to note that flat and all weather official ratings are lower than in National Hunt. And occasionally you're gonna see horses with ratings below 30 in certain races. Now, such runners race out of the handicap and are usually at very, very long odds, but they do exist. Now let's go through in the same way, breaking down each of the classes in flat and all weather racing. So as we've said, class one races are divided into the four categories, exactly uh, the same as we had for National Hub, but this time it's called group one, group two, group three, and listed races. Now, generally we're gonna expect horses with official ratings of over 110 competing in these. And before we go further, let's just look at the favorites and how they perform across all of the class one flat races since 2020. There have been 717 favourites and 255 of those favourites have won. That's a strike rate of just over 35.5%. And when I say strike rate, I mean winning rate. That is how often they win. Uh, however, there is a loss of over 4% and backing all those Class 1 favourites on the flat is going to lead to that loss. On the all-weather... Well, there's only been 73 favourites and 27 of those have won. That's a 37% win rate. And there's actually been a very small profit of 0.43%. Uh, but there are very, very few Class 1 all-weather races, as, as you would have just realised. So the following stats that I'm about to look at where we break down into the groups, we're only going to be focusing on the flat racing. So Group 1 flat racing, and this is where the big money is. It's where the five classics of the best known affairs are running. Um, and with, there's been 103 favourites since 2020. 42 of those have won, which is a nearly 41% win rate. What's really impressive is that there's been a 5.59% return on investment on those bets. However, the AE is only 0.97, which would indicate that that return on investment would level out at some point and come down to around 0% and just below. However, those horses are worth looking at with such a good win rate. In Group 2 races, uh, these are also highly anticipated races, and uh, races like the Sandown Mile, Duke of York Stakes, attract some of the world's best horses. Um, we've had 126 favourites in our sample, 42 winning. That's a 33% win rate, but a whopping minus 12% loss. The AE here is 0.82, which indicates that the odds are significantly lower than they should be on the favourites in these races. Again, if you are a layer on the exchanges, these may be races where you want to look at the favourites in a little bit more detail to consider whether to lay them. Group 3 Class 1 races on the flat. Uh, again, some of the best known uh, Group 3 races are going to include the Winter Derby, the Fred Darling Stakes. Um, and we've had 183 favourites in the sample here. 62 of them have won for nearly a 34% win rate. They've produced a minus 3.1% loss. And the AE again is pretty low at 0.88. They're not horses you're going to want to follow. And you may want to look elsewhere in these Group 3 races um, to get your profit. Listed Class 1 races are the lowest level of the Class 1 on the flat, and you're still going to see some high-quality runners in these events. 305 favourites in our sample, 109 winners for a nearly 36% win rate, but the ROI is over minus 5% which is quite a big loss straight out of the box. The AE of 0.93 indicates there is no advantage to be had without further analysis, but that possibly the ROI um, may improve slightly over a bigger sample. And again, you're probably going to want to look elsewhere uh, in the field, except for favourites in these listed Class 1 races on the flat.
Now let's move on to class two, and we're gonna bring all weather back in now as well. And class two comes right below, obviously, class one, um, and it can include things like heritage handicaps. Now there are three ratings bands to consider in these class two raters. Horses rated between 86 and 100, horses rated between 91 and 105, and horses rated between 96 and 110. Now I should point out the horses can compete in races where the official rating band is higher than their rating, but trainers generally avoid doing this because obviously it's going to place the horse at a major disadvantage to the other runners. So let's dig into these races a little bit and how the favourites perform. Now, horse racing, flat class 2. The favourite stats here, we had 825 horses in our sample. 237 of them were winners and that produced nearly 29% win rate. Um, over a minus 3.5% loss here. Um, so not particularly great. And, and to be honest, it's a little bit too small for us to draw many conclusions. If we look at the all-weather class two favorites, 331 favorites, 122 winners, and nearly 37% win rate. So a really nice win rate here. Again, a small sample, but a positive return of 0.14%. However, the AE at 0.95 indicates that this will drop down to uh, um, a zero percent or just below zero percent over time because there isn't a positive advantage in this sample uh, however there are horses that you may want to look into a little bit more detail in now class three flat and all weather races the prize money in class three flat races is usually pretty reasonable and so you do get some really quite good horses in these events the rating bands generally are 76 to 90 81 to 95 so the favourites in class 3 on the flat, there were 924 favourites in our sample, 299.1 for a 32% win rate, but a whopping minus 5.81% loss. Um, and again, ideally we would like to have uh, a bigger sample size in the non-handicapped favourites, so I can't really make any major uh, information about that. But potentially laying favourites uh, in these races could be something you want to consider. On the all weather, 471 favorites in our sample, 156 won for a 33% win rate, but a whopping minus 14.64% loss. That is the biggest loss of any favorites so far today. Class three, all weather favorites. Backing favorites blindly in class three all weather races is definitely gonna be a bad idea. And again, you may wanna consider those favorites uh, if you are a layer, do a little bit more analysis on them. Let's move on to class four favorites and we're starting to get into the lower end of things for the flat and all weather racing. The races are usually divided into rating bands of 66 to 80 or 71 to 85. Now, um, on the flat, we've had 2,190 favorites in our sample class four. 785 of those have won for nearly 36% win rate. What is great here is that there's a 1.18% return on investment. So it's kind of pretty much break even and the AE of 0.97 would indicate that's pretty much expected. Now in non-handicap races here, the favorites go up to 41%. So actually, you're better served focusing um on these races with the 41 percent win rate and again backing non-handicap favorites blindly in class four flat races has yielded in our sample a 4.2 percent return on investment and a 61 unit profit so we could argue that using class four favorites non-handicaps or actually handicaps as well because we still get a good win rate and a not bad uh, return on investment um, is a very good starting point to use your FMFR method with. And again, you can get the FMFR method free from the Race Advisor, log into your free account, get it from the resources section over there. Now, if we look at class four favorites on the all weather, uh, 1,214 favorites in our sample, 427.1 for a 35% win rate. They did, however, make a loss of just over 4%. Now, in non-handicap events, class four favorites uh, on the all-weather actually won 46% of the time and only lost around 1%. So although the sample size was a little bit small there, those horses for the backers out there may be worth looking into more detail at. 
dropping down to class five flat and all weather racing. 2,980 horses on class five flat racing in our sample. 1,118 of them won for a 37% win rate and a small loss of minus 1.42%. The ratings bands in these races are between 56 to 70 and 61 to 75. Now, if we go to non-handicap races for class five on the flat, the favourites here actually win 45% and the ROI drops to just minus 0.07%. So again, these favourites are going to be strong horses to consider. Use that FMFR method with them, uh, jump in, analyse them, and you've got a very good chance of being able to make uh, a profit from those favourites if you are very specific. Um, all weather class 5 favourite stats, 2,980 horses in our sample, 1,134 won for a 38% win rate, losing nearly minus 5% however. Um, nearly all half, interestingly, of all class 5 all weather racing are non-handicap events though, and 45% of favourites win those events. The ROI still stays at about minus 5% unfortunately, so there's still not much movement and you're probably gonna to want to look elsewhere in the field for them. Class six, all weather flat racing. Now these events are essentially the lowest grade of flat and all weather racing. Uh, rating bands are between 46 and 60 and 51 and 65, and you're unlikely to find any future stars sitting down at this level. Most of the runners here are old horses with dozens and dozens of races under their belts. On the flat, we've got 1,780 favorites in our sample, 545 are one for actually a not too disrespectful 30% win rate. They've lost around minus 2.42% um, and it does indicate that laying um, could be a potential in these races. The non-handicap races, we've got a very small sample size, um, but again, laying the favourites may be beneficial here, but you're going to want to do more analysis on them before you do that. All weather class six favorites 2986 in our sample on the handicap racing 913 winning that's nearly 31 percent winning but they lose a whopping minus 6.16 percent return on investment which is pretty high 0.9 ae indicates the odds are actually starting to get way too low to be considering these horses as back to win bets in non-handicap events, the favourite win rate increases slightly to 37% and the loss falls down to minus 2%. So they're going to be a bit better. But again, you're probably going to want to look elsewhere in these races for your horses. Now, we can't finish this without considering Class 7 horse racing. Horses competing in Class 7 events are really right at the bottom of that scale. Uh, and they're typically classified stakes races with horses that have a maximum official rating of 45. And, and there aren't very many, um, uh, as we spoke at, at the beginning. We've only got 12 of these races uh, in our sample. So just 12 favourites here. Four wins, 33% win rate from the favourites and a massive 19% ROI. But again, we can't draw any conclusions from that when we've only got um, 12 favorites to be considering. So that's a breakdown of all of those stats. And you can use the chapters at the bottom of this race card to jump, at the bottom of this video, sorry, to jump between uh, the stats that you want to see. Now we're gonna take a look at where to find horse racing class on a race class. So let's jump over to my screen so you can take a look at that. <laughs> Okay, so I've opened up the Race Advisor website at www.raceadvisor.co.uk and I'm going to scroll straight down to the race cards for the day. Now we've got the all races automatically selected and that shows all the races that haven't yet raced. But if we want to go to a specific race, we can just click on the course that we want to go to. Now underneath each race time is information about the race. And here we can see class five. So this is where we can see what class the race is. Class one, class three, class four, class one, or we can show all the races. And again, you can see that for every race. Now, if you want to go into details on a race, you can either click on the race name or click on the view race car button. When we click on that, that's gonna take us over to the race. It's gonna load the details on that page. Now we can see again in this box at the top, all of the race details. And we've got class five here as well. 
So we can see where the class of the race is very quickly, very easily on any race card. Now, if we open our, our horse's details, and again, we do that just by clicking on that horse's name in the race, what we have at the top here, again, is class five. So we've got a reminder of what the class of the race is or what the race conditions for this race are. On the right hand side, we can see if that horse has been improving or not. And we've got some other general statistics around that horse that is specific to this race. Scrolling down, we've got the entire horse history here. And again, you can see here we have a column course, class, distance, type, price, classifications. And this shows us all of that information for the race that the horse was in. So for example, on the 27th of June, 2023, in the 2.45 at Beverly, this was a class five race, seven furlongs, 96 yards, on the flat turf, 9,000 in prize money, and it was a handicap classification. Uh, the horse was wearing 9.8, had a visor, the ground was good to firm, and the horse came second out of nine, was beaten by half a length by Park Street, who was carrying 9.9. And then we've got the in running comments there as well and the official rating. So here we can see what horses, uh, what the horses performed well on before. So if we're looking for flat only, we could just type flat in here. And obviously uh, a lot of these races are flat, but maybe we just want all weather. And we type in a W and we start picking up uh, the information like that. So we can filter on this information and we can see very quickly at a glance how the horse has performed. For example, if we're looking at class fives on the flat, we can see that he's done, uh, this particular horse has come beaten half a length, beaten four lengths, um, beaten 4.25 lengths. So again, uh, beaten quite quickly. We can of course filter again like this um, by putting in uh, uh, slashes into the search box as well. So, um, that is how we can see this on a race. Now, the other thing we want to look at from class is there's a slightly different way we can consider class to the standard grading way as well. And I recommend you do this quite a lot. I'm going to come back to the home page here because I want to show you the prize money available. And again, prize money available in different races can range massively within a class. So generally, personally, I always prefer to use prize money as my guide to what class the race is instead. And again, you can see the prize money right down here. If we come back into a race, obviously we've got the prize money sitting at the top here. And again, if we come back into a horse, you can see the prize money in the horse details down the side here. So again, in a 9K race, we can see how the horse has performed. In higher level races like 30k, we can see beaten by 6.7 lengths. Um, and again, you can get an idea really clearly of how a horse has performed over a class using the prize money available rather than just the class of the horse. <laughs>Now, just before we finish off this video, I'd just like to close it all up and, and, and wrap everything up for you. So you've probably heard the phrase that form is temporary, class is permanent, and a horse's form may depend on the class it races in horse racing. And when analyzing a race, what you really want to be doing is considering each horse's previous record. Um, when competing in the same class. Now, some horses may routinely fare pretty well in class six company and struggle in class five company. And in contrast to that, improvers may actually find that a certain class of race is like a stepping stone to greater and greater things. Now, please note that on prize money, prize money available in every race varies within the same class. And you'll often find that there's more money in a lower class race on the same card compared to a higher class event. And this can indicate that actually the races in question are of a higher standard than you may realize at first glance from purely the class. So always look at the prize money available when you're considering it. Now, uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions, please do let me know by leaving a comment below. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss one of our videos. The links below are going to take you to a written version of this video if you want to see that as well. Any questions, leave me a comment. Please like uh, this video, subscribe as well, and I'll look forward to seeing you in another Race Advisor video.